This is quite the graph question, lots of graphs to draw, but let's look at it. The first graph they ask us to draw is the electric potential at the surface, oh, electric potential of a sphere, an isolated metal sphere. So we need to sketch the variation from the center of the sphere all the way up to 3R, from 0 to 3R. So you, you know what the electric sphere looks like, right? It's like a sphere here, and you got potential outside of that. Because you have an electric field. Don't know what, is it a positive, negative? Don't know lah. Okay, so we have potential, 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 so on and so forth. So you are basing this potential of one equation, which is V equals to KQ over R square. No, don't do the square, just KQ over R. Why is the K? If you're not sure what the K is, the K basically means 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. I don't like writing so many things, so I just kind of wrap this whole thing up into a K. So just keep that simple. Okay, so that means for most of the graph, V potential will be proportional to 1 over R. This is a reciprocal graph, inverse graph. We need to find what is it. Okay, so up to, okay, let's see. Hmm. This R is from the center, right? There's one thing you need to be careful of. Your 1 over R square is only applicable for outside of the sphere. When you are inside the sphere, your V is constant. So let's draw the inside of the sphere. So inside, from 0 up to the radius of the sphere, you must be at... What is it? Ah? Electric potential at the surface is already V0. So at the surface is R you will be at V0. So I put an X there just to remind myself that, oh, we, we are going to pass through that point. Beyond that, less than that, is a horizontal line. Okay, so the potential is constant inside a sphere. Outside, you need to draw a curve. But don't simply, simply just draw like that. How you know not like this? Why not like this? Why not like this? You need to actually read your points. Lah, okay, so let's look at 2R. What if it's 2R? Based on the relationship... V equals to 1, uh, sorry, V proportional to 1 over R. If your radius is 2 times, then the factor here is half. It decreased by half. Because they're inversely proportional. So, we got to put a point at, at 2R, it must be at half. So, I'm going to put this point here. Mm, since they give us a grid, must check the third point. It is 3 marks question, then no joke. Must point the point. So, 3R, the next one. What if you have 3 times the radius? So 1 over 3, that means your potential will be 1 over 3. Ooh, this is very hard to draw. Leh. Where is 1 over 3? Okay, I'm going to try. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? No. What is this? How do I find 1 over 3? Okay, let's try. So according to this scale, one small box is about 0 0.03. So 1 over 3 should be 9 boxes. So somewhere here. This is 0... <laughs> 0 0.33 or 1 over 3 V not. So I gotta put my point somewhere here. Okay, you get the idea now, right? So you gotta try your best to draw a line, a curve, not a line, sorry, that joins together the, the few points where you have these uh, key points that you know. So three marks all. The first mark is if you have a constant potential at 1 inside the sphere, so before uh, R. That's going to be right here. Second point. We are looking for the shape. A curve with decreasing magnitude. Starting at this point. So uh, generally the shape should be okay. Like if you don't draw too, don't, don't draw a straight line, just draw a nice curve. And the last one is if you pass through the two key points. You pass through 2R, half V0. And you pass through 3R, 1 over 3 V0. So that will be the third point. Okay, so that's three points for the first graph. Good practice. Another graph. This one is about elect photoelectric effect. So photons having a wavelength lambda incident on the metal surface. Maximum wavelength is lambda over lambda naught. For photons of wavelength lambda naught, Ke is E max. Oh, this one is a good information. I think I want to plot this. If you are at lambda naught over 2, you are at E max. So I put an X here. Straight away, I need to put something in it. 
Sketch the variation of lambda for values, all the other values. How do we find this lambda? What is the equation for this photoelectric effect? You think about it. E photon. Photon comes in and gives energy. Uh, and that will be the Ke max plus the work function. And you will find the limit of the photon incoming energy. So if you want to convert this to, what's the axis? Ah? Energy of uh, electron over the wavelength. So I need to make sure I change my equation in terms of that. So let's check. Um, photon can be hc over lambda. Is lambda the incoming wave photon wavelength? Yes, it is. Photons with the wavelength lambda equals to ke max. So I'm just going to leave that as uh, e. e for energy. Plus this phi, I can change it in terms of hc over threshold wavelength. Because you see all this graph here all got lambda, not lambda, not. So since you're talking about threshold wavelength, let's use it in terms of that. Okay, now we rearrange. So rearrange already express e in terms of the rest. So e will be equal to hc over lambda minus hc over lambda naught. Okay, I think we are good to go. Now, is this a straight line or is this a curve? The answer is, be very careful. You are plotting a graph of E against lambda, which means you are saying E is okay, like proportional to 1 over lambda. The main shape is that inverse curve, of course, with a constant. It means you have to shift it down a little bit, but it's going to be a reciprocal graph, an inverse graph, like the y equals to 1 over x graph. So it's shape going to be something like this, but shift downwards because of the minus. So you draw something like this, but how to know exactly what to draw? Okay, now is the time to substitute in the other values. So next one, uh, we need to sub in at lambda naught. What would be the e? So if you are at lambda naught and you sub into the, the, the equation, your energy will be uh, hc over lambda naught minus hc over lambda naught. Hey, zero. Oh. There's, there's no energy, so it's just zero. So if you give threshold wavelength, there is no kinetic energy left for the proton to come out. So here will be zero. Okay, another point. We need another point. Lambda over 3. Let's substitute in the equation. So E equals to hc over lambda naught over 3. This is e minus hc over lambda naught. So this will be 3 hc over lambda naught minus hc over lambda naught equals to 3 minus 1. Or oh, just hc over lambda naught. No? How do you know what to put in terms of e max? What is your e max? Ah? What is E max? That is a good question. E max is going to be lambda over 2, right? See, E max is lambda over 2. So what should this one be? Let's write it out a little bit so we can check it out. So E max related to lambda over 2. But here it's just lambda. There's no over 2. So if we were to add a... Uh, half here, then hmm, the relationship will change. This will be 2 times the energy, 2 times your E max. So we need to change 2 times E max at here. There we go. Okay, so now we got to do our negative gradient, something like this. Try your best to draw a nice curve, okay? Ah, I try my best. First mark will come from the negative gradient. If it's sloping downwards, that's that's fine. We're just like, okay, negative gradient. Start here and here. Okay, B1. Second point we look for, did you pass through lambda not zero? So you pass through this point. That's one more mark. And the third point is if you have a decreasing gradient, like, you know, this reciprocal shape, and you pass through the key points, one, two, that will be your third mark. Okay? Got a base on the equation. Okay, you need to know the relationship in order to draw the correct graph. 
I think there's one more. Yes, there is one more. All right. A pure sample of radioactive isotope contains N nuclei. The half-life of the isotope is T half. The product of the radioactive decay is stable. So what, what are we plotting here? Number of nuclei of the radioactive isotope is shown below. Okay, so this is the radioactive one. You see, become less and less. Why? Because you decay already. Decay, then there's no more radioactive isotope. So what do we need to draw? We need to draw uh, the time T1 and T 2T. Okay, and we need to sketch the variation of the number of the decay product from time 0 to time T. So the thing to be careful is here, we are drawing now the decay product. This one that already exists is the radioactive isotope. So in case you're not sure what's happening, uh, the isotope will all eventually decay into the product, the decay product. So this one should be a decreasing amount, which is what we see in the graph right here. See, come less and less. But the product should be increasing over time. Because the isotope become this one already, ma. So there's more and more of this oh, over time. So what kind of graph should we draw? Uh, the main idea is it's something like this. Lah. But how do we know exactly what to pass? Because it's three marks, we cannot simply draw. How to find? Hmm. Let's start off by drawing our time period or time markers first. T half and two T half. So first half life. What does half life mean? Half life mean your original, you got this many. After this time, it become half. Oh, half is here. Huh? Okay, so we draw half life should be here. So this is 1t half-life. 2t half-life means you go half again. So half again will be here. And not over 4, 4, 4. four. So that will be here. Another half-life. Okay, that's the first thing. So if you do this, uh, think this, these two markers, that's the first mark already. Then now we need to draw the line. So your line, at first there is no 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 product, uh, you haven't start any decay yet, so your line should start from here. And it should increase to some value. So what is the final value? Should we make it go until the end, uh, like here at uh, the top? If we reach this top, it means all the isotopes have become product already. But wait, we haven't finished yet, still got a bit more haven't decay. See this amount? This amount means this at time big T, not yet decay. So that sh you should not reach the top. You should still have a, a small amount that has not decayed yet. So maybe reach until this point only. Okay. And the next thing is the curve. Ah. Hmm. This one, we don't really know the curve. So we just have to, oh man, we don't really have values. So we just have to gotta draw our curve that looks something like this. Eh. Yeah. Okay lah, can lah. You end at the not not the maximum point can ready. So first mark is for the half life periods down x axis. If you start at zero and you end at I think this was five boxes, right? Yeah, five boxes. Eh, one, two. Oh my eyes! This is one, two, three, four. Whoops, four boxes only. Sorry, sorry, ah, huh? four boxes here. So you go until here. Okay, if you didn't reach the top, you, you leave four boxes, that is one mark. And last things for last last mark will come from starting from zero and reaching the original curve at one T. Oh did we pass the proper point here? Uh, we missed a little point. We need to pass through the original curve at half life. Half of them should have decayed. So we should probably reach half over here. This is the crossing point. Re Need to redraw again. Okay, sure. So we must pass this point. At this point, half of them would have decayed into the product already. So there should be half of the product there. Oh, this is getting very hard to draw. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's a bit hard. I can't, I can't draw on the screen. Uh, but yeah, yeah, this, okay, you get the idea. So you need to pass through the, you need to cross the original curve 
after one half life, you should have at least half of the nuclei already. Already decayed. Because remember, we are going from this, decay into this. It's a process. Okay, I think that's it for this graph. One, two, one, two, three. Three marks. And that's it. Wow, this was a good practice training drawing graphs. Hopefully that was helpful in helping you to draw and understand how to do some graphs a little better. But I think that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.